You're watching The Penny Hardaway Show, presented by Cook's Pest Control. The win streak is up to four as the Tigers are back on a roll. We'll recap games against East Carolina and UAB. Sit down with Ashton Hardaway and look ahead to the regular season finale, round two against FAU. It's the Petty Hardaway Show. Let's go. The Penny Hardaway Show is presented by Cook's Pest Control. You don't have to live with pests. Call Cook's Pest Control and get a free quote today. Conway Services, the official HVAC partner of Tiger Athletics. Tennessee Lottery, turning dollars into dreams. Tiger Bookstore, the official merchandiser of Tiger Athletics. AutoZone, when you've got car trouble, you want help from number one. So if you've got a battery problem, head to AutoZone, America's number one battery destination. Get in the zone, AutoZone and supported by your Memphis area Toyota dealers. Another successful week for the Tigers, one on the road and one against a rival. Hi everybody, I'm Dave Wilotion. I'm at Field. Let's check out the highlights gets East Carolina and revenge on UAB. A road trip to Greenville and a battle with East Carolina to start the week. Nick Jordan had a really nice night. First half, Joe Cooper finds it for the slam. Two of the big man, 17 in the game. Memphis took control of this one early in the second half. David Jones, one, two, three, please. 18 point, 10 rebound, double, double for Jones. Later in the half, Javon Quinterly dancing on him. Eventually finds Naquan Tomlin who brings the thunder on the two handed slam. 20 points for the defending conference player of the week. Memphis sinks the Pirates in dominant fashion, 82-58. The home finale and senior day at FedEx Forum. Five players honored pregame. Tigers were down 22 late in the first half, but a spurt capped off with this quitterly buzzer beater from deep. Makes it a 15-point game at the break. Jones is our outstanding performer of the week. Early second half. Stops, pops, drops from deep. Part of a 20-0 run. Tigers would take the lead back and run away with it. JQ to Tomlin for the mean transition jam. 75-68 Memphis, more from Jones, step back game, strong, 30 points, nine rebounds for the no doubt conference player of the year. Tomlin is our defensive player of the week, the steal and watch him run the floor. He's rewarded with another dunk, a Memphis avalanche. The Tigers outscore UAB 60 to 26 in the second half to win it 106-87. Coach, as we dwindle down, get ready for the conference tournament, we haven't talked much about the American, a league that seems to have quite a bit of parity, obviously a big surprise in, in South Florida. But talk about this new setup and all the new schools. Yeah, this setup is uh, tougher than all of us thought. You know, we never took anyone for granted, but we didn't know that these teams would be as good as they are. Uh, the nation didn't doesn't respect the league, but if you look around the league, there's been some tough, tough games and some, uh, some games that have come down to the wire, a bunch of overtime games and not a lot of blowouts. So it's, it's been really good for us after losing Houston, Cincinnati, and UCF. You said that it's been a little surprising maybe how competitive the league has been. And it felt like for you guys, that was right from the jump. Went down to the buzzer at Tulsa, a tough game here against SMU. What did the like click for you guys that this was going to be a lot tougher than you were expecting? No, me, I study. I study a lot. You know, obviously in the first week you saw what teams had, what guys, you know, the guys that were on their team from the portal or back from the previous year or transferred with a coach to, to the school as, as in uh, South Florida because they brought some guys from Kennesaw State with them to, uh, to South Florida. And you saw the chemistry early with those teams. So I'm like, okay, these teams are, are not bad. I'm sure the players started recognizing way later than me because, you know, we went out and thought we were just going to win those games because we just showed up to play. You hit on USF, obviously a really tough second half at home against them, but now they are regular season champs of the conference and maybe no one knew how good they were going to be at the time. When you look back at that, was that kind of an awakening for them and maybe a turning point for you guys? It was an awakening for them because they hadn't lost since they played us. And momentum is everything, man, because when I look at them, their record states that they're the best team. They just get it done. They get it done and momentum is everything. So I'm not taking anything away from them. Coach Abdul Rahim has done a fantastic job with that group. Messed the guys from last year with the guys that he brought with them with maybe one or two portal guys and they've, they've done great, but that's just the way the league has gone this year. Well, it's 
astounding, you think about it. They've picked 13th to do what they've done. But then, you know, all, all these new groupings coming together, playing new places. Tigers had not been to North Texas since they were in the Missouri Valley Conference days. And, uh, you know, your coach, Larry Finch, he didn't even play in that building. He played in the building across the street of it. We'll be at FAU for the first time. It, it's, it's, we haven't been to Charlotte yet, but you know that's gonna be a very fun place to play. We used to play years ago when they first built that building, it was CUSA. All the new experiences, what have that been like for you? It's been fun because, you know, Dallas is always, even though it's outside of Dallas, uh, Denton, Texas is always, you know, part of the Texas trip, the Dallas trip, so that was cool. Uh, actually going to Boca for the first time will be nice because the weather will be great and it's a, it's a great environment. And gonna, um, you're not gonna get to play any golf, I'm afraid. No, no golf, but it's okay. It's just being in the nicer cities. And uh, that's that's good when you add those teams. And Charlotte, you know, Charlotte, the Queen City, you know, hadn't been there, played there in the NBA, but hadn't been there in a while. So looking forward to going back to there, back there as well. Let's hit on FAU. You guys just took care of them at home. Gabe, we had all been waiting for since last March, since the NCAA tournament game. Now, after the game, Dusty Bay was asked if it's a rivalry, and he kind of dodged it a little bit. But you embrace him. You said that you think it is. And in a way, with Houston being gone, you guys kind of need a rival to step into that place. What are your thoughts on that brewing? Yeah, I can understand it from his point of view because he was like, hey, you know, we beat him in the NCAA tournament and gone on to the Final Four. They just beat us because we're in the league together this year. It's not a rivalry yet, but it's already brewed because of the smack that they talk and the energy that goes into those games. It's, it's rightfully so, right? I mean, I, for it to be a rival. So. I buy that. Well, right, let's, let's try to determine what is a rivalry. The one thing you got to have are really good games. And the team's got to win and the team's got to lose. And now it's two and one. You know, people forget you played FAU. You had 10 points, 10 assists in that game. That was a double-double, and you, you blew them away. But, I mean, there is a little bit of history and the way they talk and the circumstances of the NCAA. I'm not saying it's Houston yet, but it's getting there. It's not Houston, but there's, there's beginning to be a big hate for, you know, for the players against one another. And that's all it takes. What other team besides USF has maybe surprised you within the conference this year? Charlotte. Charlotte has surprised me in the conference this year. And uh, obviously South Florida. Again, South Florida, they, they do a great job. They know who they are. They don't stray away from it. And um, they won a bunch of close games, which is what you have to do. And they, again, momentum has been on their side. And then even middle to lower, you've got surprises all over the place. Rice has won here. Rice won at Birmingham, a team that it looked like they were really getting their footing all set in. You just never know in this league. It really is top to bottom pretty competitive. I think seven teams could win in Fort Worth. Yeah, the Rice is definitely was shocking with the way that they run their offense and the big man that they have to make all the plays. Their style is really hard to guard. You got to really bring your hard hat that game. And UTSA, mm -hmm. UTSA is a team that shoots the ball exceptionally well. They, they could jump up and grab you as well. How is this experience with this conference this year, some surprising losses despite a talented team, how is this going to change things going into next year, assuming you have a talented group again and conveying the message to take nothing for granted? No, you, you go out and recruit the mindset of guys that you want. I think, you know, with this group, Maybe a little cocky because of the guys coming from larger conferences and coming down thinking that it was going to be easy. Next year, the message will be given. Hopefully, we can have the team ready in June or July. We still haven't had a team in June or July. All these other teams do. They have their teams early, so they get started early. So if we get started earlier, they'll definitely get the message early. It's now three cents at Memphis. We'll sit down with the youngest Hardaway, Ashton, to talk about his freshman season. Come up next. You're watching The Penny Hardaway Show, presented by Cook's Pest Control. Welcome back to The Penny Hardaway Show. Some would say Ashton Hardaway was destined to be a basketball player from the time he was little, but he's carved his own path along the way, and now he's joined his famous father and his older brother here in Memphis. Ashton was born in 2004, Penny played his last NBA game in December 2007, so as you might imagine, he doesn't remember watching any of his dad's illustrious career. I just remember seeing my highlights of him on YouTube when I was younger, like with him playing with Shaq and like the magic and everything and all the comparisons, but I don't remember him like playing in a live game, obviously. When did you figure out that your dad was that guy when he was at his best? Um, I knew he was good, 
But I just had the idea because everybody always talked to him about me, but I knew he was really that guy when I got to like middle school, when I had my own like better understanding of basketball. It only makes sense that father passed down the love of hoops to son at an early age. I don't remember the exact age, but I know I started at the YMCA when I was younger, so definitely like preschool, elementary school, just playing around. You feel like it was almost determined at an early age what you were gonna do? Yeah, I feel like, I just felt like it was always the right thing for me to do. I mean, basketball was always around me, so I just picked it up pretty easily. Ashton grew up in California and spent most of his childhood there. He did play his junior year of high school in Duncanville, Texas, where he was part of a team that won a state and national championship. Oh, the feeling was great. It was so much hard work put into that year. So much time, effort, like blood, sweat, tears put into that year. So it was a really good feeling. But for his senior year, it was back to SoCal to play for one of the biggest high school programs in the country, Sierra Canyon. You know when you're going there, that's not just any old high school basketball program. It's a nationally recognized brand. You're playing with other big name stars. You're playing nationally televised games. What was that experience like as far as embracing all of that and soaking it in for the first time? Uh, it came really fast, actually. It felt like the NBA schedule, really, because we always played in sold-out arenas, sold-out crowds, different celebrities at all of our games. So it was, it was crazy. There were like actors there, like like Michael B. Jordan, like rappers, like Polo G, the Kardashians were at our games. So a lot of NBA players were at our games too. So it was pretty crazy. Ashton also wasn't the only player on the team who was the son of a very famous NBA player. What's it like for Hardaway to play with two James kids? Oh, it was pretty cool. I mean, I've known Bronny since before and Bryce since before I went to Sierra. We know like kind of grew up around each other in LA. But I had a feeling that we were gonna one day end up on the same team playing with each other somehow. Ashton, Bronny, and the rest of their team made a grand appearance in the 901 at a weekend tournament at Collierville High School in October 2022. It ended up being a big reason Ashton is a Tiger now. Definitely that was a game that made me like wanna come here, seeing all like the fan love and everything. I knew after that that I was gonna probably gonna end up here. Interesting. So you did not have like your mind made up before that appearance? No. And that's no. waited. Yeah. After that game, like Memphis definitely like boosted. I was like, okay, I'm really leaning towards here now. And all the fan love and appreciation. Everybody asking me, am I gonna come here next year? That really had me hyped up. When you finally commit here and you realize you're gonna play for your dad and alongside your brother, what's that feeling like? Um, I can't even really describe it. It's such like a rare feeling. Not that many people get that opportunity. But like just being in it now and enjoying the process and everything is really good. I'm glad to have them by my side through it. How do you separate dad and coach on your side? Oh, well, it's really easy because my dad, he's like a player's coach. So he's really easy to understand, like he relates to us. So it's really not as hard as it seems because that's just the way he is, that's his personality. So, but he does, I imagine he coaches you the same way he coaches everyone else, right? No, probably like Carter, if anything, yeah. He's on me pretty hard, but it's a good thing though. This season has also allowed Ashton to spend extended time with his brother Jaden for the first time ever. The two have different mothers and never lived together growing up. Being able to develop that relationship has been one of the youngest Hardaway's favorite parts of the season. Oh, it's been really great. It's probably like one of the best years of my life, like experiencing new, like basketball life in college, just learning, growing as a person, but also growing with him as my brother, who I didn't really grow up with as much. But now we're like close as a friends, like we tell each other everything, like we're really close now. So it's a really good feeling. I wasn't expecting it to be like that. Ashton showed his potential early in the season when he torched Michigan for 17 points on five of seven shooting from deep and a Tigers victory in the Battle for Atlantis tournament. Uh, it was really good. It started early. I think that was on like our fourth game of the season or something like that. But it was a really good experience. So it was like a good feeling to finally be able to experience like what a college game is like, but also have a good game at the same time. And then on the flip side, you've obviously dealt with struggles that a lot of freshmen are gonna deal with at this level for the first time. How have you been able to kind of cope with that and deal with that? Oh, um, really? I just trust the process. I'm staying patient. I'm learning from all our veterans on this team right now. But I'm pretty much under everybody's wing. I'm so close with everybody on the team. I always ask them questions. Like, even outside of basketball, we're all really close. So I'm just staying patient and just taking all my problems to the gym. Really. I'm sure this summer you're going to put in a lot of work on your game. What is 
one area in particular? I know you want to round yourself out as much as possible, but one area in particular you're looking to improve at? Um, Probably just shot creating, like being able to get my own shot off. So I wasn't expecting it to be this hard at the college level because I was able to do it in high school easily. But like now understanding the physicality of the game, knowing the pace. So I think being able to get my own shot off against players like one through in the five. And then last thing, I guess, what's your goal for your time here? My goal, uh, I want to win a, a championship for sure. I want to win our AAC tournament. I just want to win as much as possible. I just want to be a known winner when it's all said and done. We always talk about basketball teams being family. In your case, we're really talking family. Tell us a little bit about your youngest son, Ashton. Yeah, Ashton, born in California, California kid, California raised. Actually enjoyed basketball from the very day, the very beginning, and has had a basketball in his hands since he was born and just fell in love with it and has been working so hard to gain a reputation of a really good player. He was out on the West Coast with a lot of other good players and was always looked over. And I just kept telling him to just keep working, keep working, keep working. And now he's working himself into a position where he's, he actually has a name outside of just being my son. How cool has it been for you as a dad to watch Ashton and Jane's relationship grow this year? Because to my understanding, they never lived together growing up. This is the first yeah. real time they spent together. Yeah, this is the first real time they spent together. Even summers when he would come, he and Ashton would get together. But this is the first year that they've been together where they've been all in, like on the road at home and living in the same apartment building. Um, Jaden has definitely been a good big brother and Ashton is definitely learning a lot and their relationship has always been, been great. Would there be any better way to end the regular season than with two wins against FAU in 14 days? We'll preview the regular season finale in Boca. Coming up next. You're watching The Penny Hardaway Show presented by Cook's Pest Control. Let's take a look at the AutoZone road ahead. One game this week, very simple. FAU Chapter 2. Daiquiris and flamingos. <laughs> <laughs> and the beach. No, it's going to be a hostile environment. I heard that they had already sold the game out before they came here. So they're going to be ready. We're going to be ready. I think the, re the arena only fits like 2,900 people. But obviously, like you said, like brewing rivalry, it's going to be hostile. What are you telling the guys in preparation for that? I don't think I have to tell the guys anything. I think FAU told them enough when they were here in Memphis about how they felt about them, so that we'll be ready. So motivation is not going to be a problem. Chemistry has certainly turned around. It seems like it always does the end of February, early March for your teams. Yeah, especially this year. It was a little later this year because of the portal. You know, we went out and got so many guys, and it's just taken this long with this new team. Remember, we don't have Caleb Mills' team anymore. This is a totally different team with Naquan Tomlin and Jordan Brown coming back. So it's taken this team that long to, to get it right. Tonight's AutoZone Road Ahead. AutoZone, America's number one battery destination and official sponsor of Tiger Athletics. Get in the zone, AutoZone. Yeah, all the ingredients are there. This FAU game, it's now a rivalry. Back with a wrap in just a minute. You're watching The Penny Hardaway Show, presented by Cook's Pest Control. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you again next Sunday night. Have a great week, everybody. The Penny Hardaway Show is presented by Cook's Pest Control. You don't have to live with pests. Call Cook's Pest Control and get a free quote today. Conway Services, the official HVAC partner of Tiger Athletics. Tennessee Lottery, turning dollars into dreams. Tiger Bookstore, the official merchandiser of Tiger Athletics. AutoZone, when you've got car trouble, you want help from number one. So if you've got a battery problem, head to AutoZone. America's number one battery destination. Get in the zone, AutoZone. And supported by your Memphis area Toyota dealers. This copyrighted telecast is an exclusive presentation of Learfield under the broadcasting rights granted by the University of Memphis. Reuse of this presentation is prohibited without the expressed written consent of the University of Memphis and Learfield.